Team keep it clean. Y'all know I'm someone who believes people's jobs should be made easier. It should be different strategies put in place to make people's jobs less difficult. And that doesn't just apply to football. That can apply to literally anything. And Skillshare does just that. With traditional jobs, it's not a one size fits all type of thing. Skillshare helps you learn to design a career that fits you. Over the past couple of years, people have certainly dipped into their creative side a lot more. And Skillshare can help you dip into your creative voice and find your style a niche so you can help your creative career take off. We often hear so many people say, I want to be my own boss, but how do you do it? What does it take? What does it entail? Well, Skillshare has so many different freelance tips, different ways to start side projects. And you can find out how to start your own business. Believe me when I say, and talking from personal experience, no goal is too small. And Skillshare is here to help you get started. And with it being 2023, you can jumpstart your goals now with this exclusive offer. You can try Skillshare for free for seven days, but that's not it. After you try it out free for those seven days and then you decide, yeah, this is for me, you'll get 20% off for the first year. It's a no-brainer. But something else that's also a no-brainer is how to use Skillshare. So after you signed up, you go to Skillshare.com. Then in the search bar, you search either the creator or what type of classes you were looking for. For me, I mess with Marcus Brownlee heavy because he's super detailed when it comes to all the tech stuff, like how to get uh, your videos that much clearer and brighter and have your colors popping and all that. That's for me. But of course, you can can search for what's for you and the thing with Skillshare's classes is they are very very detailed they give you the step-by-step -step process in order so if you follow along you'll be good to go so if you're really serious about getting things started then again you can try Skillshare for free for seven days and then after that once you sign up you'll get 20% off for the whole year make it easier yeah. I remember a while back, uh, we had did a video and we ain't have on no Ravens hoodie or shirt or nothing. Um, and somebody was like, see, look, Engraver, he's fed up with the team. Look, he's not even wearing any Ravens gear. And that's, that's not what it is. Sometimes I'm already dressed in what I'm wearing and I just don't feel like it. And that's okay. Um, so even though you see the title of this video, um, I am not fed up with the Ravens. I'm not like, oh, I am done being a Raven. We just got on a shirt. It's okay. But I, I love y'all. Uh, team, keep it clean. Um... Ravens fans have been very frustrated. Ravens fans have been very, very frustrated. But in this first question, uh, is that frustration being directed at the wrong place or person? Let's get into it. First question came from my guy, Rodell. He said, I say it again and again. Good morning, my guy. As I sit and reflect, I come to the same conclusion every time. And what makes it worse is being a Ravens fan is like being married to someone named Deja Vu. I'm not going to waste time about things we know, like having two total receptions by an entire wide receiver core in a full NFL game. That is blasphemy. Or like running Gus Edwards three times in a whole game against the same team you just burned for 180 yards on the ground two weeks ago. Or like for the fifth time this season, losing a double digit lead late in the second half it's like a it's like a, a song right a little song on replay anyway he said i'm here to stand pat on what i've been saying properly since last season see we've been taking our anger out on the wrong people greg roman we know he should most likely still cross his fingers should be gone in the off season harbaugh is harbaugh and it's going to be harbaugh simply put edc has done a pretty decent job to me despite one area but Steve Vashadi is a man I'm looking at currently with several questions. How could you sit back this long and be okay with this? Why aren't you stepping in? How much longer does Baltimore have to cry for change? And the one common denominator I come to is relevancy. Baltimore has never truly been a threat or a Super Bowl favorite or a contender. Baltimore is always in the hunt with the in the hunt crowd or a surprise team or a watch out for them team. After after the first Super Bowl, we ain't really come close until uh, a decade later After the second Super Bowl We came close once And now we are Four decade removed With nothing To show for it I don't really want to get Into the NFL being fixed And making the Ravens Sell these games like this I truly believe This is an unstable Average team And the owner Continues to get paid Because they stay Relevant And staying relevant Results in Harbaugh Keeping his job And Harbaugh Keeping his job Results in his friends Keeping theirs Watching the same thing Happen week after week Is draining It's sad And fairly put 
It's hard to watch. But listening to these coaches and coordinators say the same thing after games and press conferences during the week is even harder. Is anything, and I mean anything, truly going on in practice and meetings? Because the game day tape shows no improvement at all. I'm talking back to into the first quarter of this season. This team is making the same mistakes. Uh, and I'm glad we made the playoffs. Yes, it buys us one more week to see our favorite team. But being honest, this isn't the 2012 magical ride. This team is not winning a thing this year. Staying relevant over contending is what Bashadi won this year. It's what Harbaugh won this year. Com- compete over contend is this team's motto. And I can't blame our players, but I can look toward everyone from coaching up. Hate to say it, but we don't deserve the playoffs. We look like the one team that made it that shouldn't have. Nothing has changed and nothing will change with this team. Overpay on defense, underpay on offense, and stay Relevant. I know I said a ton, and I will leave it at this. After all of our cries, the national media's cries, and after everyone else, if we go out and truly revamp this wide receiver court this offseason, I'm talking remove Giro. Uh, I'm talking a trade for a top 10 wide receiver, draft a top 5 wide receiver out the draft, and let Bateman come back fully healthy. If all that happens, then we finally take off as a full unit, as a full team. It will leave us wondering, wow, what could have been? Woo! That's a powerful way to get us started. Um, and he certainly spoke so many facts there. Um, Steve Bashotti in and uh on Marlon Humphrey, his show, I think what is it called? Episode 44, Studio 44, whatever it's called, where he was interviewing everybody. Um, he interviewed Steve Bashotti. And Steve Bashotti was talking about uh how a lot of other teams they have turnover and whatnot, especially at head coach and whatnot, but he doesn't like that, uh, cause that's not consistency. And he talked about he said something like and I'm paraphrasing, but he said something like consistency is great. He said consistency is great. And and what he said, he was like, You don't have to be great, but if as long as you're consistent, that is great. He said something that was super, super, super close to that. But basically, I mean everything that you're saying. The Ravens being relevant That's good enough for him Reason being Again Owners don't think like fans And we gotta realize that And accept it Owners do not think like fans We as fans We want our team to go all out We want our team to compete We want our team to win And owners are cool with winning of course But owners biggest thing is A hey, Long as my pockets stay getting fatter I'm good I'm good to go. Football, NFL is a business. I'm an owner in this business, this very uh, profitable business. I'm rich already. I'm trying to get even richer. Oh, my oh, my team is they 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 be in the hunt a lot. They in the thick of things a lot. They get a lot of attention. Oh, yeah. I'm good. We good. And when it comes that's why the Ravens have stayed competitive for so long. And and they they you keep seeing these same strategies over and over and over and over and over. And a lot of us are wondering why. Like, man, why won't they change stuff? It's because they, they are competitive, like you mentioned. They're always in the thick of things. They always, like, their names are always buzzing and whatnot. So the owner's making money. He's making money. So he's like, hey, as long as y'all making money, I'm straight. Y'all take care of the football stuff. I'll I, I send you the money for it. But as long as y'all keeping me, my, my pocket's getting bigger and bigger, I'm good. So, again, we got to remember that owners, they don't think like fans. They're not fans. Well, some of them might be, but they don't think like fans. We we want our team to really try their hardest. We want our team to go all in every single year. We want our team to fight. But for owners, as long as they're making money, they're straight. So there's been this like complacency with the Ravens because they've been good but not good enough. You get what I'm saying? Uh, they've been good but not good enough. They've been straight, but they, they ain't been like contenders, contenders like that. So I think that's all it is. So, yeah, you'd be frustrated at this, that, and the third, but we always been saying is I know a lot of people always say, oh, Giro this, Giro that, Giro. Eh, Giro is easy one to target or whatever because the offense has been struggling for a while. Um, and then you see this just this almost sometimes silly play calling sometimes. Um, and Giro has had his issues, certainly, but it goes far beyond him. Conspiracy. Next question came from my guy, David, and appreciate you for being a patron for, for two years. Two years. Appreciate that, man. He said, hey, Raymond, what's good, bro? Hopefully you and the family. Team Keep It Clean fam also had a wonderful season. It's been a while since I sent in a question, but please allow me to unleash my inner conspiracy theorist. This season, I believe we all have been paying particularly close attention to the Ravens offense. We've seen an offense on fire for the first few weeks and recently an offense that has zero situational awareness, play calling that lacks consistency and or reasoning, uh, playing players out of position, wide receiver one, project fat. I appreciate that. And let's not forget the third down plays where the opposing defense dropped seven into coverage and we 
we respond by sending a wide receiver on a goal route, triple covered, a tight end on a curl route, uh, or a comeback, three yards short of the first down marker and double covered, and a running back to the flat, six yards short of the first. My question is, oof. That 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 is it like funny to read that, but it also hurt inside. Uh, he said, "My question slash conspiracy is: uh, Could this all be a strategic move by Steve Bishotti and Eric DeCosta to have some negotiation leverage and attempt to drive Lamar's price tag down by keeping his statistical numbers low? When the play calls made sense earlier this season, LJ again was setting the league on fire. I believe the front office saw that price tag going beyond the clouds, and they had to do something about it. Lastly, there's no way. Whoa, hold up. Let me um, let talk about that first. And I would really hope not. I would really hope not. Um, I can't put anything past anybody, though. I really can't. When you see the the product that the Ravens have put out there, when you see Lamar Jackson, you see his potential, you see what he's capable of, and, and for you to consistently put that product out there, I can't put anything past nobody. I would hope that they wouldn't sabotage themselves because to me that would be silly. It would be silly to do that. Um, but I know in football it's, it's, it's about the long game, man. It's not just about the short game, it's about the long game, uh, and it's about the future. Uh, it it's, it's goes far beyond just one season. Um, people are thinking about future, long-term stuff. So I, I would hope that they weren't doing that, though. But anyway, he said, lastly, there's no way. Uh, you've coached the game of football at a high level since your 20s. I'm referring to Harbs and Giro, uh, and they, they continuously make the same mistakes week in and week out. In Harbs, Ravens, Tenor, I've never seen him out coached on a weekly basis ever until now. No one has been called out for horrible decision making uh, like in times past. Ex Cam, example, Cam Cameron and Mark Tressman, and both Cam and Tressman's offenses were ranked higher, 13 and 18, than Giro's 29th ranked pass game. Well, now, now, were they ranked 13th and 18th in a pass game or 13th and 18th overall? Because that's, that's tough. And then, I mean, with the numbers, like, it's, it's, it, it's tough to – because it's tricky. Because, yeah, he, any team – well, most teams, well, a lot of teams that lose their starting quarterback, um, things are going to go down in a bad way. Things are not going to look as good, not nearly as good. Um but then that's where coaching, like when you lose a player, somebody gets hurt, somebody's absent, then that makes you step up your game that much more because you got to compensate. You got to compensate. But we've been seeing, we haven't been seeing that stepping up. But anyway, um, he said, uh, to me, this just seems very, very intentional. My apologies for the super long question, but I'm hoping LJ is not, for, oh, but I'm hoping like LJ is not for the playoffs. I'm out. Mm, 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 mm. Um, yeah, like I said, I, I would hope that that wouldn't be the case. I, I I really would hope that that wouldn't be the case, cause I know you you don't want to pay him a bunch of money. We know you don't. Uh, they they gave him an offer, but they don't want to pay him like all the money in the world like he may want. But um, I, don't know, I just cause, and I know it's a dirty game. It's a very very dirty game. But I would just really hope. That that really wasn't happening. Next question came from my guy Chris. He said, "What's up, Engraven? What if I love Lamar, but no buts? Dude is unreal and needs to get paid. The Ravens squandered his talent so far, and it sucks to know that we probably won't see a fully maximized Lamar in the Ravens jersey. But what if he ended up? What? What if he ended up as a wide receiver on a pass-heavy team in an alternate reality? Given his, no, 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 quarterback only." Given his speed, athletic talent, and ability to embarrass defenders in open space, do you think he would be a dominant receiver in the NFL? To be clear, I'm not suggesting that he should be. Lamar is a QB. He's the best offensive player on the field and should have the ball in his hands every play. Obviously, it won't happen, so this is just a wildly speculative what-if question from someone sitting at the end of the bar. Thanks for everything you do for us fans. Yeah, and us fans, because we all fans of the game of football. Um, I think he could if he wanted to, but that's like... Yeah, we no, no. Quarterback and quarterback only. And the last question on this quick episode of questions from subscribers came from Tayshawn. He said, is the incoming offseason already set? What's up, Engraven? It's been a while since I did one of these questions, but I hope it finds you well. I've been increasingly suspicious of this Lamar situation throughout the season, but it isn't until now that I'm thinking that he really may have already played his final snap as a Raven. I feel as if the sneaky Ravens could have already agreed to a hush deal with Lamar and another team to tag and trade him in the offseason, which may be why he we may not, not ever see Lamar in the playoffs. Possibly part of this assumed deal is that he is preserved for his new team. I never thought about that. <laughs> And his business, 
So it's possible because you you can't like sit up here and really think that these teams. Oh well, we're gonna wait till the negotiating window to to make a trade, or we're gonna wait till it's clear by the NFL for us to talk to these. No, no, these teams they're dirty. They do dirty business. It happens all the time. We know that. So I I can't sit up here and say what you're saying is is far fetched. Mm. 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 That would make it hurt that much more, but. It could could make it make sense. But anyway, we'll see how it goes. He said, Lamar might love the organization, but he sees, like we all do, that their mindset, philosophies, coaching staff issues, etc. This team is headed nowhere fast. That, on top of the fact that the Ravens have made it clear that they don't intend on making the necessary moves to build around him, including paying him what he deserves, I think he's making a wise decision to go to a team more than willing to compensate him and build around him so that he can finally reach his true prime and give his best years to a team that is actually trying to win Super Bowls like he is. I've been a Ravens fan most of my life, but they made me feel like they don't care about winning. Just making sure they're somewhat relevant so they make profit. Hey, we were just talking about that earlier. Uh, all of our talent seems to leave because they don't. They see they're being held back. Uh, do you think it's possible that Lamar in the front office came to another silent agreement to trade him away when they get the chance like they did Hollywood? I mean, it seems like this whole season, even through their own media, they've been trying to groom fans and get them ready like for life on the Ravens without Lamar. You said it, baby. That's it. They, so you've seen so many outlets You've seen people who are close with the team And putting out all these different articles As a matter of fact, one just came out Today is the fifth One just came out yesterday Another one just came out yesterday Prepping people for life without Lamar it, Coincidence? Mm, we'll see He said, hopefully I wasn't too all over the place And this question wasn't too long uh, I appreciate the content You keep us all in the loop with what's going on with these Ravens And act as a, a mediator slash, slash therapist at the same time But like Lamar Jackson Very well could be uh, When it comes to being a Raven Real soon I'm out And going wherever LJ goes <laughs> I like that ending man um, But yeah You spot on A lot of stuff is Is what it seems And It's like they A lot of these It's like they're trying to Subconsciously Let Ravens fans know Subconsciously prepare Ravens fans minds For what could be Yeah this feels like a dream Shout out to Graven.